Hi, hello, welcome back to my channel. My name is Sky, and today we are doing a new tag that's going around. And this tag is the Single Shadows tag created by a makeup journey on Instagram, Cassie. Thank you so much for making this tag because these questions were really difficult for me to answer and it had really had me going through my collection and thinking. This tag is 10 questions relating to your single shadows and I actually filmed this top down so we could really like examine my eyeshadow picks. So if you'd like to see what I picked out then just keep on watching. I will also be linking Cassie down below. Please go give her a follow. She is so underrated. She's so creative and talented and she deserves way more recognition so I will link her down below. Do check her out. But anyway, let's go on into the questions. Okay, welcome to the top-down view of my desk, and we're going to be swatching the shadows on my hands right here. Do excuse the fact that I have eczema on my hands. I, I can't help it. But let's get on into the eyeshadows. So the first question in the tag is your current favorite single shadow. Now, this was easy. So easy. Um, it has to go to this beauty right here. This is Ice Blink by Shine by SD and Seeking Shifts from the Earthborn collection. This eyeshadow is truly a work of art. There are so many different sparkles in it, like I'm not too sure if the camera is really gonna do it full justice. It is the most sparkly, intense, iridescent shade I've ever come across. The amount of different sparkles in here is ridiculous. It is so glossy looking on the eye. It, I pair this with every single look that I've been doing lately. It's ice blink on the hand. It's got like a, as Riley seeking shifts, as she would call it, a spicy orange like flip to it. But it also has like pink, blue, gold. It is packed with so many different like shimmers. It is ridiculous. I'm not too sure, like, I'm trying to work with my lighting to see if I can capture, like, shifts right now, but, like, the sparkle is just next level. This shade has truly taken my breath away, and I definitely think that if you're an iridescent slag like myself, you're gonna need this in your collection. It is just absolutely magnificent, and this is stunning as a face highlight as well. Alright, the next question is your previous favourite single shadow before your current one came along. Now this was so difficult because one of the shadows that I was gonna put in here is actually like more suited for another question, so you'll see that towards the end, but my previous favourite single is this one right here. This is Terra Moon's Half Moon. It is it is such a beautiful boy. Like, I I can't really- I don't really have the words to describe it. It is the most perfect sky blue, like, intense shimmer. It is, like, a slight duochrome, because it does have, like, a slight purple shift in it, but it's more so just a really, really, really intense sparkly metallic. It is just so gorgeous. I love pairing this with any time I do a blue look. I love putting this on my inner corners as well. I feel like Half Moon is just such... I would say it's also like an underrated shadow because I just don't... I feel like people don't talk about it enough. It is the most perfect light blue shimmer. I haven't found anything quite like it. The formula is immaculate, the sparkles are intense, and there isn't too too much of a base colour to it like you can see there. There really isn't that much but you can build it up. And another reason why I love it so much is because of the name. It's a name in Skyrim that I really, really enjoy. So many reasons why I love this shadow and it is still one of my favorites. Now the next question is your favorite one and done single shadow. Now I have two shadows to talk about for this. Some categories I do have two shadows to discuss and this is one of them. And I don't know if this really counts I am counting it myself because they're single shadows, but they're not like single pans per se. They are my Colourpop Super Shock shadows. I have the shades Frog and Ritz, and I love these so, so much. I don't buy from Colourpop anymore uh, for many reasons, but I, I mean, you can see how much these have been used. These are just my favourite one and done shadows. Let's talk about Frog first. Frog is just, I mean, look at the pan that I have in it. It's actually a bit ridiculous at this point. 
I love this putty formula. It's just so malleable and like squishy, but it's so easy to smack all over your eyes when you don't really know what you want to do. Like a lot of the time I just pair this with a bit of like winged liner and be good to go. Um, during summer, this was like my most used product because like I just really did not want to have layers of eyeshadow on my eyes and this just provides such a beautiful layer of like pink blue sparkle to your eyes. Again, it just looks wet and glossy on your eyes. This reminds me a lot of Ice Blink, to be honest. Um, I might compare them in a little bit. But the other shade that I have been gravitating towards to lately is Ritz. Now this is like Frog's more neutral toned sister. This has like a cool toned taupe base with a silver shine to it. It is just... Oh, I love this texture. It is just so... Oh, I'm a very sensory driven person and this texture just really, really makes me happy. But yeah, you can see the tan like taupey base and it's just full of silver and taupe sparkle. It is absolutely stunning. These two actually pair really lovely together and they're just such easy, simple eyeshadows that when I just have no idea what I want to do but I want a bit of sparkle, I just throw these on the lid. I can see myself completely using up Frog. It's just such a universal shade. Um, I will swatch Ice Blink next to it though because I feel like they're kind of like similar vibes. Not completely the same, like obviously texture wise they are very different and Ice Blink isn't iridescent, but like the kind of vibes are there. No, Ice Blink has more shine to it and more multi-dimension sparkles, but like same vibes. The only annoying thing about Colourpop Super Shocks, I mean I guess it's both annoying and convenient because I always take these to Greg's whenever I go and visit him. Um, they're just easy to throw in my makeup bag and I just have one easy shadow to have. But the packaging is just so chonky and I can't like put it in with my singles like to make custom palettes. All right, question number four is a single shadow you think is underrated. Again, I have two for this one. And they are both from Cleona, two of my beloved Cleona shades. So let's start off with this one. I have been singing this shadow's praises for years now since I got it. This is glazed. It is one of their uh, glitter multi-chromes and this has a cool lavender base with warm lavender and gold sheens in it and this because of it it's like a glitter like flakier formula. I wouldn't even say flaky like the particle size is quite like intense. Like, this is just so different to any other purple eyeshadow I've ever used. And I do not hear people talk about glazed enough. I genuinely believe this is like the most underrated Cleona shadow. <laughs> but yeah, you can see the massive dip I have going on. I love this shade so, so much. It is the ultimate fairy eyeshadow. I just, oh, And because it's so pastel, it just pairs really nicely with a lot of other things. I'm actually surprised I haven't hit pan in it. Like the dip is so huge. I can, I'm probably gonna hit pan in it very soon. Excuse the fact that I have so many other sparkles on my hand, but you can just see the gold sheen in it. Like it is, it's so pastel. It's so pretty and stunning without being like an iridescent. Like it still has a little bit of sustenance to it. I mean, not much since the base is quite sheer, but uh, I can't describe how much I love glazed and how I truly believe that like if you love purple eyeshadow especially like warmer lavenders this is perfect for you like this makes me think of like the song lavender haze and the other underrated shadow I have actually hit pan in as you can see right there really tiny pan but this is heirloom why are all of these upside down? I just love this shade of emerald green. I believe this is one of their vibrant multi-chromes. Now their vibrant line is one of my favorites. Um, I know they came out with a collection that was like a mix of like glitter vibrants, I think they're called, where it's glitter and the vibrant line, which I desperately want to try because glitter and vibrant, my favorites. And this shadow is just the most perfect emerald green. 
I wouldn't say it's like the shiftiest multi-chrome in Cleona's lineup. Definitely not by any means. But the tone of it and the like shininess of it is just so captivating to me. It has that beautiful vibrant emerald base and it has like a bit of a warmer lighter green sheen to it. These shades would actually pair really nicely together. I think I might do that soon. <laughs> I've had them for years and I just don't think they get enough love. So yeah, Cleona Glazed and Cleona Heirloom. Definitely ones to look out for. Question number five, is a single shadow not worth the hype? I'm sorry, but I think the Cleona Jeweled Multichromes are overrated. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Maybe it's just this color. This color is Oculus, and it's the only Jeweled Multichrome I own from Cleona and in my entire collection, like, for a matter of fact. But I, I just think Jeweled multi-chromes with like a black base, they're not for me. And this shadow looks beautiful, like it shifts like from purple with a bit of like, there's a tiny bit of gold in there you might be able to see, to like teal to blue it, and green. Like it is objectively beautiful to look at. I've owned this for years. I think about, oh, Christ, I think I've owned this since 2019. I think. Guess how many times I've used it? Twice. We're in the year 2023. <laughs> I swatch the shadow all the time and I'm always like, wow, that is a beautiful shadow. Like I swatch it out. I'm like, that is so reflective and stunning. Every time I show people like multichromes, this is the shadow that I show. But I just don't wear it. Like, I'm not a big fan of black base multichromes on myself. Like, I don't know, I'm a bit bored of them, like to a degree, I think, because I see them everywhere all the time. And I feel like every, like, every single brand has their own version. And I also find that the couple of times that I have worn this multichrome, while it looks stunning, it creases on me, which I haven't had any of that, like, I haven't had that issue with other Cleona multi-chromes before and I've hear, heard a lot of people have similar issues with Cleona's jeweled multi-chromes that they do crease. Like as gorgeous as it looks, practically for me at least, it's just not worth the hype. Like I just have not gone my money's worth out of it and it's just kind of sitting in my Cleona palette just kind of being there. All right, question six is a single shadow that best represents your favorite singles brand. Now my favorite singles brand it used to be Cleona, but I can't lie, it's now Terra Moons. I have fallen dramatically in love with Terra Moons. I've hit pan on almost every single one of the iridescents that I own from them. So when choosing a shadow that best represents them, I was thinking maybe the Cosmos, because it is a beautiful shade, but so many brands have shades like that nowadays. But I thought something that's within the Cosmos family but also like represents Terra Moons as a whole, because when I think Terra Moons, I think of their iridescent shadows. So what better way than to choose an iridescent? And this right here is Sub Luna. Now, I got this for my birthday from my friend Katie, and that's why it doesn't look super, super used, because I've not owned it for too long. This is truly a stunning iridescent. It's one of my absolute favorites. It has such a large particle size and it is a bit more of a flakier formula. Like if I swatch it, you can kind of see there. Like it's so like almost chunky, but in a good way. And because it's an iridescent, like it has no base color to it and it is purely the sparkles and colors that the Cosmos has just without the blue base. So it's got like, orange, pink, like, god, I picked up so much on my finger, Christ. I will say that this shade does get a lot of fallout, so, I mean, use with caution, but usually I don't really care about fallout, I think it just adds to the look, personally. But it has peach, gold, green, blue shifts to it, and the particle size is so large that it is just, it's actual fairy dust on your eyes, is so magnificent. I really think that if you don't have the Cosmos from Terra Moons and you only chose to pick up this shadow, 
you'd really get your money's worth because if you just put a blue base on, then there you go, you got the cosmos. And Terramoons is kind of known for this kind of like cosmos, like shifting family. Question number seven is a single shadow you grew to like. So I included this order in my Terramoons order last year and I objectively really enjoyed it, but I wasn't like obsessed with it. I wasn't fully in love with it. And it's this shade right here, and this is Shattered Stars. Now, this shadow took a long time to like grow to really enjoy it. At first I was like, wow, it's so pretty, like there's so many shifts in it. It's got that like cool denim blue purple base, periwinkle base, what have you. And it has like green, blue, purple shifts to it, gold. And I really love looking at it, like objectively looking at it, this is stunning. But practically any time I would put it in a look, I just did not like how the look turned out. Like no matter what mattes I was pairing with it, it just looked a bit wrong. I don't know what I was doing wrong, like for some reason, like do you ever have shadows that that just occurs? But honestly, the more that I played with the shadow and got to know it, I really, really fell in love with it, especially loved using it with like, you know, similar colours that it shifts. Like I really liked pairing this with like lavenders and blues, even with neutrals this pairs so beautifully, it's very like a, like a yassified neutral. But yeah, it took me a while to get to know it and to realise how much I really enjoy it, but it is such a good shadow and it's also a very beautiful one and done shadow. Like, I almost included this in my one and done uh, question. Now, question number eight is a single shadow you would gift to your worst enemy. Now, I don't actually have one for this <laughs> question. I was racking my brain, really trying to think, looking at all of my singles, and there wasn't really anything that I had in my collection or that I could think of that I would gift to someone that I absolutely despise. Question number nine is a single shadow you would pay double for. There is one shadow that I think deserves that and that's this one. This is Radiation from Terra Moons. This was like my white whale for the longest time. I had been yearning for a green this bright and this like just a traditional grass metallic green that was extremely shiny, really sparkly, really saturated. Hadn't quite found it. The closest thing I had found at the time was Heirloom, but you can see that Heirloom is a bit more cooler toned and like maybe a shade darker. Whereas this is warmer and lighter. I would pay so much money for this over and over again because I have tried to find alternatives and nothing has ever come close to radiation. It is the green eyeshadow. It's the green, it's the only one that should exist. I say that and then we have the next single, that, the final single that we're gonna be talking about. But radiation is just, I, oh, Christ. I had been yearning for this shade for years. Like, I, I had been wanting to try it every single time I was looking for my perfect green and I would see swatches I'd always be like what is that on your lid what is that like what is this shadow in this swatch set it was always Terra Moon's radiation and I would truly pay like ugh, double the price for this I would I would it's just nothing has come close to how saturated and intense and it's sparkly and foiled this green is this tone of green like nothing has come close to it thankfully we're on to the last question because my hand is really starting to hurt with all of these swatches goddamn and it is question number 10 a single shadow that represents you now this was difficult because i was gonna choose <laughs> shine by sd ice blink and i was looking at my other like iridescent singles and I'm like well obviously it would be an iridescent but then I thought no you know what's a shade that I look at I wear it and I always feel the prettiest and I feel like my true self it's this boy oh I love her this is coalescence by Terra Moons this this her look at her it is a lime green that shifts to like a bright 
bright yellowy green with gold pink and oh, so many different sparkles to it. I just feel like me with this shadow. Every time I wear it, I'm like, this is me. I am a woodland fairy, which every time I choose to wear this, I love how dimensional it is, the different shifts in it, the sparkles, it is just unmatched. I have never found something as beautiful as this that represents who I am. <laughs> you can see like the gold shifts in there with a bit of the pink as well. It has all the colours that I absolutely adore wearing. I feel so fondly towards Coalescence. I can see myself hitting pan in this. I have to like force myself to not use it. So every time I do wear it, I feel, it feels so special and so like, oh, it's so wonderful. I love her so much. Coalescence is just incredible. Right, and that is my little overview of my picks for the single shadow tag, so I'm gonna take you into the outro. So that is it for today's video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Do let me know, what are some of your favourite single shadows? Actually, answer one of the questions down below. You can either answer all of them or answer what single shadow you grew to like, because I think that is such a unique, cool question because I really had to think about like what's something that like I initially didn't like as much but then eventually got to love. If you'd like to see more makeup content from me then you can follow me on my Instagram. It's Fairy Sky right here. I post all my looks there and I'm active on there every single day. If you'd like to support me further I do have my own small business Rain Cloud Candles Co. We are a small queer owned business based in the UK and we make handmade candles and wax melts. The link to shop will be down below along with our social media if you'd like to support us. Thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe if you haven't already. I'd love to have you here and as always stay safe, wash your hands and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye!